Last week, I was talking with Alex Venezia during one of the East Oak Studio Painting From Life sessions. I really love these sessions because in addition to giving me a whole lot of inspiration and really just energizing my painting, I wind up having really surprising and insightful conversations. If you're not familiar with Alex's work, Frankly, I'm a little bit surprised because a lot of you have told me that he is your favorite working artist today. But in case you haven't heard of him, I'm going to show you some of his work now and include a link for you to check out his work down in the description. That being said, one of the coolest things about these Painting From Life sessions is that I get to, to dispel a lot of myths and misconceptions I have about the larger art world. And this week, the topic at hand was art school, and I want to share what I learned with you in today's video. This is something I've talked about before on my channel in my video about what I learned from attending the Portrait Society of America conference. As you might recall, one thing that came up from quite a few painters was just how common it was for painters to find art school pretty much useless. And I talk about this today because I've spoken with a lot of you, and one of the most consistent things that comes up is a worry that you are at a disadvantage in your art journey because you're self-taught. And I'm here to go ahead and dispel that notion. I'm going to tell you exactly why you don't need to worry about having attended art school and what you can do about it. So today I want to go over why art schools often teach very few hard painting skills. I'm going to go over some of the downsides of art schools and ateliers and how you can get away some of the best benefits for yourself without quitting your job and going back to school. So I want to kick off with a thing that Alex talked with me about that I thought was most interesting and actually prompted the idea for this video in the first place. And that is that during our conversation, Alex suggested that the primary boon that you get from a good atelier is that you learn to be self-disciplined and self-motivated. I was really surprised to hear this because, frankly, when you think about art schools or you think about ateliers, you kind of imagine the structure of that program being the thing that motivates you. But Alex explained that he actually considered himself to be self-taught, and a really big part of that was just how much his art education really encouraged him to be self-taught and self-disciplined. And Alex isn't alone in that self-taught identity. One thing that I think is surprising to a lot of you who watch this channel is just how overwhelming the proportion of painters are, um, especially who work in this style, um, you know, the kind of thing that you can expect to see on this channel. Um, such a large proportion of them are all self-taught. So if you feel insecure about not having been to art school, I want to tell you right now that this isn't a thing that has to hold you back. Instead, I want this to give you clarity on how you can best move forward. And that's what I mainly want to focus on in today's video. So from talking with a lot of artists, I've realized that collectively, we kind of have this romanticized idea in our head about what we miss if we don't go to art school. So for me, in my head, what this looks like is people go to a school and have this gifted master artist watching over them pretty constantly and giving them perhaps like some secret techniques to improve and giving, the enc giving them the encouragement to keep going every day. These are just a few ideas I had, but if you have a clear idea of what you imagine an atelier or art school to be, I would love to hear it in the comments because chances are that the story you have about how these programs, quote, make the artist could be holding you back because you assume that that means that you couldn't do it too, or that the thing that's holding you back is something outside of your own control. But that's just the story we tell ourselves. And then there's the reality, which is that these environments are more hands-off than you might think. You are largely working quietly, keeping to yourself, and a lot of the critiques you receive are pretty straightforward. You know, something along the lines of, 
this line needs to be angled more vertically or this value is a bit dark. Now, that feedback is very helpful, but it's the kind of support you can get in a number of different ways. Even though many artists didn't need to go to art school to be successful, most of them did, at a critical point in their journey, have a mentor who was there to give them feedback and support. Other artists regularly share work with peers whose judgment they trust. And now we have a ton of tools for getting feedback online, like Patreon, where some artists actually offer critique in exchange for monthly support. So that's just one way that you can take a really big advantage of art school and put it to use for yourself. But there are a couple of other important advantages to getting a traditional art education that actually came up in this same conversation, and I don't want to gloss over them. And those are that art schools give you the physical and metaphorical space to develop your own practice. And one other thing is that it is really nice to be surrounded by other artists who are pursuing the same thing. So in practice, what this looks like is you might expect going into an atelier that you would have a solid eight-hour block of time every day blocked off to paint. You are also surrounded by other artists who are making artwork, and you have a physical setup with an easel and all your supplies where it's very easy to just jump into your art practice for that day. And these are things that are super underrated, <laughs> truly. Um, on top of that, in an atelier environment, your art growth is at the forefront of your mind all the time, so you're naturally going to spend a great deal of time and mental bandwidth figuring out how to make sure that you're improving toward your big goals as a painter. And so as a result, when Alex was describing his own experience, what he said is that art school really helped him to create a structured and consistent routine and to figure out exactly how that can drive him toward his goal for his paintings. And it also helped that his environment gave him the space, both physically and time-wise, to work toward those goals. But the good news here is that all of those things are things that you can create for yourself on your own, because I know that not everybody can afford to just quit their day job and go work full-time as a student in an atelier. So here's what you can do to recreate this in your own painting practice. The very first thing you can do is to go ahead and create physical space in your home to work. It doesn't have to be a whole studio. I worked in my own dining room and living room quite a bit um, with just a simple plein air easel. It doesn't have to take up a lot of space. And I guess it doesn't have to be permanent, but there is a real advantage in having an organized space that's always there and waiting for you. And it's a reminder for you to go ahead and make time for your own work whenever you see it. In addition to that, you can go ahead and block off the time that you really need to spend at your easel to make sure that you have the time to make the improvements you want to make. And this doesn't have to be a full 40-hour work week either. I think this is one of the biggest misconceptions that painters have right after the idea that they need to go to art school, probably. Uh, but many painters only have so much creative bandwidth in a week to be painting, even the ones who are doing it full time. And I, in my own atelier experience, I was in the studio for eight hours a day, five days a week, and I'm reasonably sure that this was one important factor that led to my burning out afterward. So what does matter in my experience and having watched many other artists go through this journey is that consistency is much more important than time. So if you can carve out one afternoon or one evening per week and genuinely commit to that time for your painting practice, that's a really fantastic start. And from there, if you can expand that time, that's great. But you don't necessarily need to worry about that before you have consistency developed. So to recap, the first step you can take is to set aside an area in your home that is just for painting, and then carve out a consistent time in your schedule to show up to paint, even if it's less time than you would like it to be right now. 
What's left is to then put together a plan for your self-directed art journey. And this, I think, is where a mentor can come in handy because they can give you guidance on which exercises to focus on, and they probably have a broader list of ideas on that than you do. If this is something you'd be interested in, I have a video all about finding a great art mentor that I will link in the upper corner of this video. And then the final step that you can take is to surround yourself with a community of artists. This is something that you can get through mentorship in a lot of cases. You can also find meetups and organizations locally, but whichever path you take, I know that for me, this has been really important, and I, I didn't realize just how critical it was until pretty recently after I had been isolated in my house <laughs> since the beginning of 2020. All right, so that covers how you can get some of the biggest benefits from going to an art school on your own. And before I continue, I do want to put one thing out there, and that is that there are really great programs out there, and I do not mean to diminish their value or knock them in any way. In my experience, if you are looking for one of those programs, your best bet would be an atelier. These are not accredited institutions, so if you want a degree, this is not going to be the place to go. But in sacrificing the degree, you make up for it so tremendously in terms of the quality of instruction you receive, um, particularly on a technical level. Then the main alternative to an atelier would be an art college or university. And whether you're talking about the fine arts program at a typical liberal arts university or you're talking about a program that is known as a school of art and design, unfortunately, most of the time, the experience is going to be pretty similar. So most of the schools that I just mentioned are not focused on drawing and painting skills at a high level. And I know from hearing from many of you that this comes as a bit of a shock um, or that you simply don't believe me. But if you have a painter that you really admire who's working at a very high level and they did go to college for art, I would challenge you to talk to that artist about their experience and find out how much they actually learned from that program. Some common things that painters will talk about not learning at an art college include how to make money as an artist and techniques for painting beyond the very basics. Now, it bears mentioning that there are exceptions to this. I know many artists who have learned a great deal um, over at Academy of Art University in San Francisco or Art Center, College of Design in Pasadena. And I do know painters who have lucked out and found teachers working in really small schools or community college who had a great deal of training and wanted to pass that along. Um, but these are exceptions because most schools look to hire instructors who fit the more conceptual focus that so many art programs have. Um, and there just isn't a focus on teaching strong technical skills as a result. Okay, I wonder how many people I just made angry with that section. Um, but if you love realistic painting and you talk with your favorite artists long enough, these are the kinds of things that you will hear over and over again. So I hope this was a help nonetheless. But if you take away one thing from this video, I want it to be the fact that you do not need to quit your job and go back to school if you're serious about your art. In fact, your favorite painters probably didn't have formal art training. They simply had the support that mattered along with the space and time to commit to practicing their craft. I hope this gives you the permission that you need to fully embrace your own journey. I look forward to seeing you in the next one, and until then, happy painting.